हेलो एवरी वन आई मिस भावना दनेश मुनोद वेलकम यू ऑल इन एग्रीकल्चरल डेवलपमेंट ट्रस्ट शारदाबाई पवार महिला आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज शारदा नगर बारामती गुड डे डियर स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट पीरियड वी स्टडीड अबाउट एयर वेज एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑल्सो वी स्टडीड अबाउट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सिविल एविएशन डिपार्टमेंट विच लुक आफ्टर द सेफ्टी ऑफ पीपल now next mode of transport comes is water transport children water transport means goods and services are traveled through seaways seas waterways so water water transport is also one mode of transport so it refers to movement of goods and passengers on waterways by using various means so there are various modes of transport like boats steamers launches ships etc so with the help of these means goods and passengers they are carried to different places both within as well as outside the country so when the goods and passengers move inside the country it is known as inland water transport see children i am repeating again the goods and passengers moving inside the country moving within the country through waterways it is called as inland water transport and when the different means of transport are used to carry goods and passengers on the ocean or sea route it is known as ocean or sea transport so in india ministry of shipping looks after development of ocean transport throughout the country so water transport refers to movements of goods and passengers on waterways by using various means like boats steamers launches ships etc then people who are traveling within the country that is called as inland water transport as well as from state to state or say from one country to another also different means of transport are there to carry goods and passengers so it will be on the ocean or sea route so this is called as ocean or sea transport then in india ministry of shipping looks after development of ocean transport throughout the country now here also for water transport children we have advantages and disadvantages so we'll see what are the advantages first one by one now water transport they have told it is relatively economical mode of transport for bulky and heavy goods so very economically mode of transport for bulky and heavy goods also water transport can be done then it is a safe mode of transport with respect to occurrence of accidents see accidents will be less in water transport so they have told that it is a safety mode safe mode of transport that can helps in promoting international trade then next there is no cost for constructing and maintaining of routes for water transport they are naturally made water transport route is naturally made no construction required then it offers more flexibility as compared to rail transport see water transport gives us more flexibility means it is not there that it will be on time only as railways are on time at that time they will move from one place to another they will shift on that sharp time but for water transport time is flexible so it offers flexibility as compared to rail transport so advantages are what relatively economical mode is there for transport of heavy and bulky goods safe mode of transport promotes international trade construct and maintain routes flexibility is there then disadvantages we will see one by one children the first disadvantage does does not provide door to door service see water transport cannot be water possible for water transport people to provide door to door service then the next ad- disadvantage it gets heavily affected by adverse weather conditions so it is comparatively slow moving transport very slow water transport is very slow more investment cost is required see more investment cost is required is involved in terms of ports ships maintenance etc so disadvantages we have seen that it does not provide door to door service it gets heavily affected by adverse weather conditions it is comparatively slow moving transport and more cost investment is involved in terms of profits of port ships maintenance etc also it is subjected to perils of sea children the next disadvantage 
means what wherever say obstacles are regarding mountain anything natural calamity can come so this water transport is risky during this perils of sea another information for the basic knowledge or say general knowledge they have given that india currently ranks 6th among the marine time countries within a coastline of 7517 kilometers with 14 major ports from that 12 government is there and one corporate and about 200 non major ports currently operating in the western and eastern regions of the country see uh, india the water transport that is marine transport in india it ranks at 6 place all over the world our country india ranks 6th in marine transport so why it ranks 6th because we have 14 major ports that is 12 of government and one corporate and about 200 also non major ports we have currently operating in the western and eastern regions of the country so according to the ministry 95% of india's trade by volume and 70% by value occurs through marine time transport then the next mode of transport is children monorail and metro now everyone must be knowing met monorail or metro so these are the fastest mode so these are the types of rapid transit system rapid means fastest mode of system found in urban areas so these types of transport are energy efficient and less polluting too a monorail is a railway in which the track consists of a single rail or a beam so the team or the term is also used to describe the beam of the system or the trains traveling on such a beam or track so from the passengers perspective monorails can have some advantages over other modes such as less intersection turns no traffic jams absence of problem of collision examples of monorail in india is mumbai monorail now see children in simple way i will tell you monorail and metro trains these are fastest mode of transport rapid ones so here the most advantage thing is what railway routes no traffic jams are there for railway routes there is no coincidence or collision means what merging is not there they will not intersect or accidental will be less so we have in mumbai monorail so here is the fastest mode of transport single rail system monorail and metro so this system say or this term can be used to describe the beam of the system or the trains traveling on such a beam or track so from a passengers perspective whatever they have used that monorails have advantage less intersection less traffic jam and more convenient as well as a fastest mode thing monorail and metro trains now the second mode of transport children is ropeway now ropeway means it refers to the mode of transport which connects two places on the hills or across a valley or river yes ropeways are there you must have noticed recently now government is starting or say concentrating on to build up ropeways also for the convenient mode that easily people can cross the hill or climb those who are not able to climb the hills they can go through ropeway so it is built near valley or a river so in ropeway transport trolleys move or wheels connected to a rope rope are there and are used for carrying passengers or goods so example see your example also they have given regarding raigad there is ropeway for raigad fort so ropeway means they can travel goods also or people also travel over here see over here if the picture children you can see see this is of monorail or metro and the next one children if you can see it is of ropeway so ropeway if you can see here the second one the first picture is of metro trains or monorail and the second picture is of ropeway children so we have at raigad those who are interested they can go for raigad fort journey where you can find ropeway or it also it has sonmarg in shrinagar ropeway is also at sonmarg in shrinagar so ropeway refers to mode of transport which is connecting two places on the hills or across a valley or river 
Then the next mode of transport children is pipeline transport. Now pipeline transport is what? It is sending goods through a pipe children. Most commonly liquid and gases. Yes or no? So pipeline. Nowadays what is the fashion regarding gases pipeline is there. We don't have to purchase cylinders nowadays. New techniques are there. Automatically the gas will come through pipe children. Pipeline. Gas pipeline it is called. So these this is also say one type of transport not necessary to have a cylinder at a home from pipe through pipe also like how we have water pipelines at home you can also have gas pipelines at home that is pipeline transport so pipeline transport sends goods through a pipe most commonly liquid and gases short distance systems exist for sewage slurry or water by long distances or also they, which can be covered through pipeline children. So seventh one regarding modes of transport was pipeline transport. So in this transport children we have seen roadways, railways, airways, waterways. Then advantages, disadvantages we have seen. We have also seen monorail and metro ropeway we have seen we have seen pipeline transport also now we come to our next point of the chapter children that is warehousing now we all know we have studied in 11th standard say warehousing means storage capacity so warehousing refers to storage of goods and it consists of all those activities which are connected with storage and preserving of goods so it is a means of storing the goods we all know warehousing means storage of goods. So warehousing is defined as a group of activities connected with the storing and preserving of stored goods from the time of production till the time of consumption. So preserving stored goods for the time of production till the time of consumption. Now how warehousing is defined? A warehouse is defined as an establishment for the storage or accumulation of goods. And what are the functions of warehouses? We will see one by one. The first function is storage, children. So storage is the basic function of warehousing. Surplus commodities which are not needed immediately can be stored in warehouses. So they can be supplied as and when needed by the customer. See, why we do storage of goods? So in emergency, if the things are required, we can take that things. So we do storage. Now at present we don't require, now for example children will, for summer season will require cotton clothes. Say for summer season we will require cotton clothes and for winter season we require woolen clothes. So what will happen in summer do we will use winter clothes? No, what we do that winter clothes we keep in cupboard as storage, yes or no? We keep it as safe, why we keep because in winter season we will require back those woolen clothes. So we use it, we store those things. So that thing if we don't require, that is woolen clothes, if we don't require immediately, what we will do? We will keep as storage in cupboard. And that is why storage is defined as a function of warehousing. Then so the second point is price stabilization. Now what is the price stabilization over here? We will see warehouse play an important role in the process of price stabilization. Means keeping the price stable. So it is achieved by the creation of time utility by warehousing. In warehouses usually large stock of goods is kept. So whenever there is shortage in the market, goods can be immediately supplied through warehouses, which helps in price stabilization to avoid rise in price due to demand and supply difference. So see, what they have told price stabilization means price can be stable, price can be not changed. Why this will happen? Because of warehousing. So price stabilization means what? When in emergency the goods are required, it can be sent to the market immediately. So due to this what? Price will be stable. It will not increase at a higher cost. The product price will not increase afterwards which cannot be controlled. So to make price stabilization, it is possible or it should be that the goods should be stored in warehouse. 
So it plays an important role in process of price stabilization. Warehouses usually large stock of goods is kept. Whenever there is shortage in the market, goods can be immediately supplied through warehouses, which helps in price stabilization to avoid risk in price due to demand and supply difference. Then the third one, children, is risk bearing. The third thing in warehousing is what risk bearing. Now, what it does when the goods are stored in stored in warehouses, they are exposed to many risk in the form of theft. Theft means what, children? Robbery, deterioration. It can be spoiled. Fire. In this will be there. Anything can be happened. We store in go down, but a surety we cannot give. Anything. It can be spoiled. The goods can be spoiled. It can be stolen. Deterioration can be happened. It can damage. It can vanish. So warehouses are constructed in such a way that they minimize this risk. So we have to construct a warehouse for what? To minimize. To have less risk. So a warehouse keeper has to take the reasonable care of the goods and safeguard them against various risk. For any loss or damage sustained by goods, warehouse keeper shall be liable to the owner of the goods. So risk bearing factor is there. When our goods are stored in warehouses, they are exposed to many risks. Deterioration can be there. So what they have told, warehouses should be constructed in such a way that minimize means whatever the risk factor is there, it should be minimized. There should not be too much loss of goods or wastage of resources. Then we come to the next point, children, that is financing. Now, what is financing over here? So, loans can be raised from the warehouse keeper or from finance institution against the goods stored by the owner. See, financing means if we require money, we can raise money through warehouse, that is, who is having a storage from the storage keeper or from financial institution against the goods stored by the owner. So, goods act as a security for the warehouse keeper or for financial institutions. In such a manner, Warehousing acts as a source of finance for the business, for meeting business operations. Then, financing means loans we can get for go-downs. We can get loans for storing the things for warehousing. Then the fifth one is grading and packing. So, warehouses nowadays provide this facility of packing process also children. Not only we can store the goods, but those who are having that storage go-down, they give you an offer of packing the products also. So products are packed, grading of goods are done in the warehousing, goods also can be con packed in convenient size according to the instruction of the owner. So grading and packing also is coming under warehousing. Then the next one is transportation. See now warehouses can provide transportation facility to bulk depositors to collect goods from the place of production and also it sends goods to the place of delivery on the request of the owner. So warehouses can provide transportation facility children to bulk depositors. It collects goods from the place of production. It also sends goods to the place of delivery on request of the owner. So transportation is also possible. Then the next one is what time, place and utility. Now, time and place utility is what children, warehouses creates time utility by preserving the goods, that is time is preserved, time is saved. Why? Because we know storage of goods is there in the go down till they are demanded. So it creates place utility by providing the goods at the place where they are required. So time and place utility, that means you can save your time, warehouses save the time by pre preserving the goods till they are demanded. So it also creates place utility by providing the goods at the place where they are required. Then the next one is processing. Now certain commodities are not consumed in the form. They are produced. So processing is required to make them consumable. Example C. Paddies, polished fruits are ripened, etc. So sometimes warehouse undertakes such activities on behalf of the owners. Now see children, now some go-downs are there where things should be done. Not only the storage is done, 
they have to pack the things also so the owner of the warehousing they take like the stock has come in the go down so they see that the example they have given regarding fruits that is fruits can be ripened I means suppose raw mango has been kept in the go down that raw mango can be ripe we can ripe the fruit we can means that raw mango can be converted into a ripened fruit which is useful for eating so this processing can be done in a warehousing by the owner so there are some commodities which can be consumed as per the owner responsibilities in warehousing so in warehousing children we have seen its meaning we have seen an establishment of warehousing that is storage price stabilization risk bearing financing grading and packing transportation time and place utility and processing now the next point in the chapter children is types of warehouses types of warehouses are there we'll see in the next period this type of warehouses till then bye take care children thank you